weeks. We are about to start. We have five presentations in our section, and you probably remember the rules. The presentation is one minute. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. It should be great. After yesterday's part, it should be that. No, no, I think uh, all the presentations are very interesting, and I was speaking with some colleagues. They, they are hunting some of the presentations to see, so look out for the questions. Um, I'm uh, Lina Silenis, I'm from Kolnas University of Technology, so I will be your chair. And if you remember, if I'm showing you three minutes, so you should scroll pretty fast. Uh, but you still have time, but if it is one minute, so you should jump to the conclusion. So actually you have 15 minutes, so more or less it's plenty of time. And I call first presenter, Mikhail Prauschet. And Mikhail will present uh, how to power batteryless devices from nothing. Perpetuum mobile. <laughs> uh, actually, the title is Powering Batteryless Embedded Platforms by Piezoelectric Transducers, a pilot study. So, the floor is yours, please. Okay. So, thank you for a great introduction. So, my name is Mikhail Krauzek, and I'm coming from the Technical University of Strachy Republic and I am going to present the cooperation of uh, our university and University of Alberta. It's a pilot study of public batteries embedded platforms by the piezoelectric transducers. So uh, this is my presentation outline. Uh, so first I will explain the research context and uh, present the general topologies of harvesting wireless sensor networks. Then I will introduce uh, the piezoelectric converter itself and uh, I will describe the experimental setup. And in the experimental part, I will explain the R firmware, uh, the present the overview of the result, and uh, I will conclude and I will show you some future work outline directions. So, the research context on this work uh, is the is the broad uh, topic because uh, we have a long-term project aim of ultra power electronics energy harvesting internet of things communication intelligent sensors and all is applied in the environmental on industrial monitoring so basically we are doing the smart sensors for environmental monitoring or the industry for the factories In uh, this topic, we are using three topologies. So the first topology is the batteryless system without any energy storage. The second using the uh, energy storage module. And we have two conversions module. And the last one uh, using the batteries. So in this particular work, I'm using the, the second one. So we are using the harvesting module. We are harvesting energy from the piezoelectric uh, domain. And then we are converse the energy to the storage module represented by the capacitor. And after that, we are converse this stored energy to the dissipation module represented by the MCU board. So first, I would like to present the, uh, the converter itself. So uh, the, our solution use uh, the energy harvesting for the vibrations. And uh, this kind of energy varies uh, depending on the amount of kinetic energy generated by the source. So in general, the source is uh, the, some mechanical, mechanical energy. So in this contribution, we are evaluating the possibilities of uh, piezoelectric transducers usage to powering microcontroller-based embedded systems. So we are using to power some microcontroller board. So this, uh, this uh, transducer is uh, uh, based on the direct piezoelectric effect and uh, it can be exposed uh, to vibration with the constant ovarian frequency. So in this solution we are using the constant frequency to simulate the result. So we, are uh, we do some construction of the experimental setup. We are using the uh, piezoelectric transducer based on the, uh, on the piezoelectric tip. And we have the electrical motors, uh, which is rotate uh, by the frequency of 1.33 Hz. 
the resonance frequency of the piezoelectric electric element is uh, about 10 Hertz. So you can see on, on the graph, uh, we are starting in the time uh, uh, 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, we are hitting the tip. And after that, we are variating uh, in the resonance frequency of piezoelectric uh, tip. So uh, in general, the amplitude of the output voltage is around uh, 30, 35 uh, volts plus minus. So we are generating pretty much high voltage on this kind of the uh, transducers. So our testing setup is look like this. We have uh, input kinetic energy. We have our piezoelectric tip and we are using the integrated circuit LTC uh, 3588. So it's a rectifier of the piezoelectric energy and uh, it, uh, it uh, has the DC-DC converters uh, to output capacitor. So in general, we are converting the input uh, energy through the rectifier. We are storing in the capacitor with the capacitance of the 100 microfarad. And uh, we are trying to remain the constant voltage on the output capacitor to power the RMCU board. So this is our MCU board, uh, maybe you are familiar with. Uh, so it's a uh, uh, Freedom board KL25Z. It equipped with a high, uh, high performance ARM Cortex M0 Plus uh, microcontroller, and it's also very low power. So uh, we are implementing two modes. We are implementing uh, the very low power run mode, and we are implementing the very low power stop mode. So in the very low power run mode, we have uh, uh, current consumption around uh, 700 to 800 microamps. And in, in the stud mode, we have uh, something around 15 microamps. In very uh, low power run mode, we are running a testing firmware. For these purposes, we implement uh, the seventh order field filter to test uh, uh, all possibilities of the MCU because it's implement the uh, digital uh, signal processing instructions. So we want to use uh, this kind of features. So we are switching between the very, very low power run mode and stop mode in some predefined intervals. So it looks like this. We have uh, this uh, finite state machine. We are starting in the init mode. We initialize peripherals. And after that, we are going to the run mode. After we finish the calculation of the filter uh, parameters, then we are going to stop mode. We are setting the low power timer. And after four seconds, we are going back by the wake up instruction. And we are going back to the run mode. If we have uh, no energy, then uh, we are going to the shutdown, and after we are obtaining an energy, we are going to the init again. So, results of the experiment. Uh, we are measuring uh, three parameters. We are measuring the supply current to development board. We are doing the time lock of energy storage voltage and the time lock of output capacitor voltage, so we can estimate the input and output energy. For this reason, we are using the precise uh, pico amperometer. So, in general, we are doing the fr uh, free experiment. The first experiment describes the charging of the system. So, we have no uh, load uh, applied in, in the setup. So, we are charging by electric motor by the piezoelectric element. So, you can see the output voltage of the uh, capacitor. And also, you can see uh, in certain time about uh, eight second, uh, the DC DC converter in the in the integrated circuit starts working, and we are remaining the about 1.8 volts on the output. The second experiment includes the load, so we are calculated. Uh, uh, we are calculating uh, the the fear filter. So we are starting operating and we are charging uh, the output capacitor. But uh, in this time, you can see 
we have uh, the power consumption from the MCU, and you can see the switching the run and stop mode. So the system is running, and uh, we are doing our operation. And also, if we still uh, rotating the motor, the the uh, the energy storage is charging, and it's working definitely as a perpetuum mobile because it's uh, working with the infinite input of the energy. But uh, due to uh, lower efficiency of the uh, DC-DC uh, DC converter, we have some state uh, when uh, the incoming energy and efficiency and outcoming energy is in the balance. So this is proof uh, it's working on this kind of input energy. And first experiment is this charging. So uh, we try to obtain information how long can operate without uh, the input of the energy. So we uh, start on the referred state of charge. It's around 11 uh, microjoules, uh, millijoules, sorry, uh, on the 15 volts of the, of the energy storage uh, voltage. And uh, we did the six cycles to completely uh, depleted the energy storage. So uh, in this case, it works uh, around uh, 20, 24 seconds. So this is the overview of the result. Uh, we do uh, uh, 10 trials run for the each experiment. And uh, <laughs> what is uh, interesting here? So first interesting thing is uh, we measure the very low power run current and a very low power stop current. And uh, we do it for the two input voltage. These uh, currents are almost uh, are, are very similar. So uh, in this case, uh, the 1.8 voltage is much better because the total power consumption is uh, low due to the dynamic, dynamic properties of the system. And on the other hand, uh, the efficiency of DC-DC converters is uh, better in the 3.3 uh, volts solution. That means uh, if you're using uh, for application to uh, withdraw much current, the total utilization of the energy is better in the case of the 3.3 volts of output voltage. So, what are the conclusion here? Uh, we try to explore the possibility of use of uh, piezoelectric energy to powering the battery system. So we have two ob observation. The first is, as I said, the 1.8 uh, voltage solution has the significant lower power consumption. And second conclusion is, uh, in the reverse of the first observation. So if you are using the higher voltage of the op output capacitor, you can uh, utilize more energy. So, and in the future work, uh, we have uh, many, many direction. So we want to try this experiment with the uh, internet of communication, such the LoRaWAN or uh, any other. So we have to solve the problem uh, about the uh, terminate the communication in the right time because it's uh, not so easy as calculation you have to uh, think about the data uh, consistency and so on the second uh, we want to more push on the reduction of incoming energy because current solution is the pr pretty big so we want to reduction and uh, uh, obtain energy for the smaller uh, tip and the last one uh, we want to uh, try to push hard on the finding method to reduce power consumption of the uh, system itself. So we want to find solution with the no uh, tens of uh, microamps, but uh, ones of microamps and, and maybe a little more, uh, less. Okay, thank you for your attention. Congratulations, Michal. I even did not manage okay. to, to raise, uh, to so raise so the So you said one minute. <laughs> yes, so, so we have time for questions, please. What kind of piezoelectric do you have used? 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't uh, remember the type. It's, uh, uh, I don't have the photo here, I think. So... Uh, is it ceramic or is it plastic one? Yeah, it's a plastic, plastic one. PVDF maybe? It, it's, it's, po it's possible. I, I, I don't remember. <coughs> It's supposed to be some dual layer because it works on bending. Yes, okay. yes. You simply cut, you know, this buzzer because yes. this buzzer is also working on on. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's it. If you manage without cracking. Hmm. More questions? Please. Mm -hmm. uh, you excited the transducer by using an electric motor in your experiments, but how do you ex what? will be the actual excitation source in practical applications? Uh, in practical way, uh, we can thinking to uh, apply it on some uh, electric motors, big electric motors. So in the practical way, we are uh, applied some weight. And if uh, we do some uh, vibration with a big machine, after that we can, uh, we can generate some energy. That's our... Okay. What's the voltage magnitude obtained directly from the transducer? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's here. It's ah, about yeah. uh, thirty volts. Mm -hmm. okay. More questions? Uh, I had similar question. Um, yes, you are hitting it periodically, and uh, it should generate huge amounts of yes. energy. But I've seen applications uh, with uh, Zigbee uh, s power switch uh, when you want to control the electricity. So there are power switches which you press. Okay. And there is enough energy not just to press and to, to, to read uh, the switch position, but then you can rotate uh, in order to adjust uh, the color temperature or intensity. Okay. So can you imagine measurement, reading the sensor uh, communication mm -hmm and communication almost continues because you are rotating and it is communicating with Zigbee. Uh, why you have chosen such application? Because such application, it does not show you how much energy with one action you can generate. Then you can say, okay, we have collected 10 Joule and with this we can do this and that. Okay, uh, that's a good question. Uh, so in this study, we are focusing on the the major work is in the in, is uh, is here. It's I in the it's in the firmware. We try to uh, optimize the firmware. We didn't fully uh, thinking about the amount of energy as input. We try to optimize the output. So I think in the future we uh, won't try to shrink the the solution. We want okay, to okay. specify the amount of energy on the input. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, this is not all today. Uh, what if you are designing some electronics and you need to test it? So, Sebastian Temich. Yeah, correct. Uh, will present design and in the identification function to reduce the computational resources on the testing process of the analog electronics circuit. So, Sebastian. Floor is yours, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, my area of interest is slightly different than all presented here in this conference. Uh, I'm focusing on design and, and identification function to reduce the computation resources on the technique process of the testing process, sorry, of an analog electronic circuits. Uh, to remind you, my name is Sebastian Temi. I'm from Institute of Electronics, Silesian University of Technology. Uh, this paper was uh, prepared with uh, Tomasz Golonek and uh, Damian Grzegca. Uh, during my presentation, firstly, I shortly de describe you the problem of uh, analog circuit testing. Then I will go to the circuit under test, circuit of our choice, its description, functional parameters. Uh, then I will go to the technological process imperfectness, simulation profile, profile finally. And then I will describe you uh, our method of testing using the regression models based on the output signal feature selections. Uh, finally, I will share some results with you. Okay, analog circuit, circuit testing problem. As you know, digital circuits uh, has their own standardized method of testing, 
where in the analog circuit there are no standardizing standardized methods because we've got many outputs uh, many output forms many functions many specifications of these uh, circuits so researchers divided the problem of the testing into two two parts the first part is fault driven test when we are focusing on checking which element of the circuit is fault uh, and what's the impact what's the influence of the of this faulty element to to all circuit performance in the second way more popular in nowadays uh, we've got specification driven test it doesn't matter whether uh, some element is uh, faulty or not we are only measure the uh, specification parameters if they are in its tolerance range of, of the circuit the circuit passed the test if not it not passed the test and go go back to, to the uh, technology line the circuit of our choice is uh, charge pump circuit in the Dixon uh, architecture as you can see on the right side it's it is it is built from uh, NMOS and PMOS transistors in 50 nanometers technology uh, power source input and the output function uh, the functional para functional parameters the specification parameters which we try to measure in the circuit in the Dixon charge pump is gain of the circuit with nominal value presented here load dependent losses uh, measured with uh, 100 uh, kilo ohms load of the output uh, with nominal value presented in the middle of the table uh, of the table uh, and the third one is the power consumption nominal value presented here uh, there are many different uh, faults that may occur to the circuit including the production line including the lifetime of the circuit uh, in example spot defects shorts or opens in the circuit uh, thermal effects we are focused on the uh, technological processing perfectness called it the photolithographic mass deviations it means that the photolithographic mass can move in the uh, process of production of this element and it uh, cause it may cause the change in the width and length of all transistors which build uh, the the circuit uh, in our research, the, trans, uh, the photolithographic mask moved from uh, minus 5% up to 5% uh, uh, of its nominal value. So the width and length of the transistor may change from 0 0.95 of the nominal value up to 1.05 value of the nominal value of the width or length. Uh, the simulation profile, of course, we don't have the, 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 the circuit. Uh, we prepared uh, simulations only in this using simulation software. In the simulation software, we've created 100 different analyses of the circuit. It means one, sorry, 1,000 different uh, faults that may occur uh, during this uh, technologic processing perfectness. Uh, the transistors are simulated using BESIM4 models, represents uh, 50 nanometers MOS technology. Uh, the circuit is sourced with 3.3 DC voltage and the circuit is stimulated by pulse waveform from 0 to 3.3 volts uh, with uh, period times equal to 20 nanoseconds. Our idea, our to test the functional parameters in comparison to the classic approach in a in the classic approach, you've got different stimulus. You stimu stimulate uh, the circuit, and from, trans the, from transient response of the circuit, you try to measure, using measurement devices, every functional parameter as you want. Uh, of course, it's a time-consuming uh, method because you need to stimulate the, the, stimul the circuit, install the, the measurement devices, check the first parameter, do the same for the second, etc, etc. Uh, our proposed approach sh try to, uh, is trying to short this because we stimulate circuit only once with the pulse waveform. And from the output, from tra transient, transient respond of the response of the circuit, we are getting the, the output signal features which based on which uh, the model of regression is 
created. Uh, this model or models of, regress uh, of regressions allow us to calculate or to determine the functional parameters as we wish. In uh, our uh, research, we are focusing on three functional parameters. So we've got three models of regression uh, for each functional parameter. Uh, feature selections from the, from the output signal, rising time of the output, uh, output signal in transient domain, uh, peak value, settling time, variance of the signal, settling minimum value, settling maximum value, and the mean value of these two. Uh, this, uh, feature uh, these features create us, allow us to create the feature vector x, as you can see here, based on which the regression model is created with the formula as here. Uh, in our methodology, we've uh, created third order polynomial as, uh, as the regression model. <coughs> so it means that uh, this k value is free. We've got seven different features. So n is seven and we've got three functional parameters. So the m value is free. And this formula, according to the third order polynomial is as follow here. You've got, we've got coefficient multiplied by the first feature Oh, sorry, the first feature in the power of three, the uh, second coefficient in the times of uh, the first feature in the power of two, and the third uh, coefficient in the power of one of the first feature, etc. for the rest of the features. And to sum this up <coughs> with the, the free coefficients, the BM coefficient, uh, all coefficients are that uh, were determined using the, the differential evolution algorithm. Uh, population in the algorithm has have 200 individuals, 2000 generation generation was performed. And the grading function is as here, we are trying to minimize the error between the target value and obtained value of the of the uh, system. Of course, uh, it's an offline method that uh, it means that we prepared all the simulations, all the responses and the feature previously, and then we tr are trying to, to, to determine the, the values of the coefficients. First of all, we, would, we wanted to, to compare it with the, another model of regression, with the classic linear regression. Classic linear regression, uh, regression was determined and the linear correlation uh, was calculated. The value is presented here. Using our regression model, first order uh, polynomial with uh, coefficients as presented here, the, cor uh, the correlation of this model is more than 99%. The difference between calculated and expected value exemplary, of course, are presented in the table below. And uh, then we are trying to check what's the sensitivity sensitivity of this uh, method inside the tolerance range. Because as I said previously, uh, the circuit is unfaulty. The circuit passed the test when the functional, functional parameters is inside the tolerance range. The tolerance value is 2%. So the circuit is unfaulty when the functional parameter is inside nominal value and uh, minus 2% uh, up uh, and plus 2% uh, toleration. Uh, sensitivity of this method is 98%. We compared it with, compared it with the support vector uh, super vector regression model uh, when the sensitivity of this model is 97%. Exemplary difference between obtained and correct uh, value of the gain parameter is presented in the figure on the right. A uh, constant line uh, represents the true identification and the dot dotted line obtained identification uh, by our algorithm. Uh, second, uh, low dependent losses parameter. All coefficients were determined using this methodology. Difference between correlations, linear uh, regression model correlation is up to 98% when we've got, uh, using our methodology, we've got uh, more than 99% difference are presented in here. Sensitivity inside the 2% tolerance range, sorry for P2 parameter, it should be here, uh, 
we reached 99% of sensitivity when for super vector regression uh, it is near the, the 99% difference as you can see is here for the second parameter and the third one the last one uh, power consumption parameter bigger difference between linear um, regression model and our proposed third order regression model more than 10 percent uh, difference uh, and our methodology is better and um, difference in the exemplary values are presented here uh, okay the uh, efficiency inside the, the tolerance range here we've got uh, only a half of percent tolerance range of the p3 parameter sensitivity 96 percent uh, when where for the super vector machine is slightly better than, than our our methodology difference as you can see are just a little bigger than, than uh, in the previous two two values but all but the sensitivity is high as well uh, finally the time analysis because we want to, to reduce the time of computations uh, the time required to determine all the features of the signal is 9 milliseconds milliseconds of course it was prepared and it was all calculations were performed using the the matlab software uh, not implemented into in, into the real the real circuit uh, time needed to obtain all three uh, functional parameters is in sum summarized five microseconds overall time of the of the determination of, of the functional parameters is near 9 milliseconds uh, in, to compare it with the classic approach when you want to, to determine all these three parameters in the classic approach you need to stimulate the circuit twice in the first you need to stimulate the circuit to get the uh, p1 and p3 parameter uh, functional parameter uh, then you have to change the, the circuit by uh, adding the, the 100 kilo ohms load to the output of the circuit and uh, repeat the process once again uh, to determine the value of uh, second parameter of uh, PLD parameter. Uh, so we reduce two times the, the time of the test uh, in comparison with the, the classic approach uh, to test the, the Dixon charge pump circuit. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for attention. Congratulations. Good timing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <you>. now <coughs> we have some time for questions. So, anybody willing to ask the question, please? <coughs> then uh, I will use. Yeah, okay my chairman's uh, position uh, first of all 50 nanometer technology versus what is reported nowadays five nanometers why is that it is normal for analog circuits to lag behind the digital ones uh, <coughs> yes you know to analog circuits um, analog circuits technology is not increasing or decreasing the, the, the technology as in the digital circuits we've got the uh, 50 mm. nanometers technology and also sometimes 19 nanometers technology is used in analog circuits uh, when as you said in the digital circuits mm. we've got five nanometers and uh, we want to get it lower and lower okay. uh, so it's uh, as I can say it's a typical values mm -hmm. of the technology okay. of this technology thank you uh, one more uh, yeah. you are using for excitation 20 picoseconds rise time uh, 20 picoseconds rise uh, <coughs> but uh, the higher is the slew rate of the excitation signal the higher is the maximum current which yeah. might damage your circuit yeah. And in future application, when the driving signal will be not yours, yeah. but uh, coming from internal circuit, it will never be 20 picoseconds. Yes. It will be much slower. So why is that? What, what you wanted to I agree. Uh, you know, it's some kind of difference between uh, the concept, as I present here, and the future application in the, into the, the real circuit. So, of course, 
Uh, I presented you the concept uh, and we choose uh, in the simulation process uh, the stimuli like I presented so here. So it was only simulation here? Yeah, it was only simulation mm. and ah, uh, okay. you know the simulation is slightly Can different than, than, uh, than the r real, real stimuli. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. No more questions? Then thank you. Thank you. Okay, what else is left? Photovoltaics. We haven't thought, thought about photovoltaics. And Davut Hadari yes. uh, will present us uh, the performance assessment of high gain single switched boot converter for photovoltaic based residential application. So, those who yes. are looking forward to install some photovoltaic batteries on your roof, you should listen to this presentation. Mm -hmm. So, the floor is yours. <laughs> so, well, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Dawood Skwaderi. I am an uh, assistant professor in electrical and electronics engineering, department of Bursa Technical University in uh, Bursa in Turkey. Uh, this uh, study is presenting uh, a DC DC boost converter. My uh, main um, uh, area of interest is power electronics, especially I'm working on uh, DC DC converters and uh, DC to AC converters for inverter structure and controller uh, horse structure. This study is presenting a DC DC uh, boost converter that can enhance the DC voltage to a higher level. Uh, so it is uh, be the boost converter. And uh, also, it is not only is applicable for uh, residential application, uh, residential based application. It is uh, suitable for uh, all kind of uh, structures that you need to a boost converter. For example, in uh, electrical vehicles or uh, in uh, battery management systems or any other area that uh, you need a boost converter. Uh, in this uh, study, uh, I'm going to uh, present you uh, uh, the proposed uh, DC DC converter that uh, uh, not using a transformer. Uh, so uh, the uh, spatial uh, losses related to these uh, transformers uh, is not will be our uh, proposed converter. Also, the DC gain of the uh, structure is considerable. For example. Uh, in the duty cycle of 90% for the uh, power switch, we will have a, uh, around 38 times of uh, input voltage at the output end. Uh, B side, uh, we uh, presented a, a new structure of uh, switch capacitors uh, connected uh, to the output of this boosted boost converter to enhance to this uh, DC voltage to two times. Okay. I will talk about this uh, structural solve and also finally a, a wide group of uh, simulation a MATLAB Simulink has been done and also an experimental result will uh, presented by applying a, a PV panel uh, with uh, around 200 watts and uh, the uh, results are confirming the mathematical and uh, the simulation results. In this uh, figure uh, you can find the overall structure of a PV based residential application. You have a, uh, a renewable energy source uh, and uh, the PV panel that you know uh, tops in the list of renewable energy sources. After that, uh, the uh, proposed boost converter uh, to enhance this DC voltage uh, to a, a desired value of the voltage. After that, we have the invertible look to convert this DC voltage to an AC voltage for the home appliances or any other uh, uh, <coughs> device that can work in uh, 224 uh, volt AC voltage in the grid side. Okay, uh, so uh, you can have uh, the MPPT maximum power point tracking systems uh, to fix this uh, DC voltage at the output of a converter uh, or any other type of controllers. Okay, uh, this MPPT can uh, track uh, the uh, maximum power point uh, by the uh, tracking from the inside and uh, input and output uh, ports of the converter. Uh, 
Um, this study is uh, focusing on the structure uh, more uh, and not on the MPPT algorithm. So uh, in this in this uh, slide, you can find uh, the proposed converter. Uh, the B uh, sub figure can show the proposed converter in uh, several uh, blocks of the more blocks of the switch capacitor uh, structures, and the first one can show the proposed converter with only one block. This uh, block, the first block is the proposed converter and the second block is the switch capacitor block. Uh, as you can uh, see in the B sub figure, uh, these uh, blocks, these SC blocks, switch capacitor blocks can be extended to one, two, three. And any of this structure can enhance the DC, the input voltage to two times. For example, if you have a uh, 100 volt at this point, at the drain uh, uh, point of the uh, power switch, at the output voltage, with consideration only one block, you can you can reach to 200, and if you apply the second one, you can reach to 400. The main uh, advantage of this structure is that we have only one power switch, so uh, the control process of the power converter is very easy uh, in a comparison with uh, uh, higher amount of uh, power switches. And also, the structure for the switch capacitor block is simple. And by applying several uh, diode, power diodes and capacitor, you can uh, enhance the voltage without any control structure. Uh, so, uh, this is the uh, mathematical analysis of the proposed converter. It can be uh, useful for researchers that can uh, that would like to uh, work on the controller structure. As you know, uh, when you have a power converter uh, that uh, contains a uh, power switch, the structure of uh, power switch can be changed by in on and off mode of the power switch. So, in the on mode, for example, here, I will come back to this slide. Uh, so, uh, I should uh, say uh, you uh, first about this. As you can see, when the power switch is in structure, uh, in the converter, uh, it means power switch is in on mode, okay? The structure is another thing. And when the power switch is in off mode, the structure change, okay? So we have to investigate our uh, formulations, okay, equations, uh, to on and off modes, okay? So I will come back to this uh, to these uh, equations. This is very useful, especially for the uh, sliding mode controllers or uh, PI and PID controllers or any other type of controller that needs to transfer function of the system. Okay, so we have to find a relation between output voltage and DUT cycle of the power switch. So, if you have a question, uh, equation, uh, by this equation you can investigate your control structure. Uh, to control and uh, send uh, desired and related uh, 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 pulses uh, to the uh, power MOSFET, okay? In the first one, we uh, uh, assume that uh, the uh, power switch is in on mode, okay? So, we have two uh, uh, inductor and two capacitor for the first block, so uh, it will be very interesting. Uh, to find the uh, derivative of uh, current for the inductor and derivative of first derivative of the voltage for the capacitor. So, uh, and I reorganized them uh, as can you see in the uh, second equation in a matrix. So, uh, in the next step uh, for the 1 minus d time or time, uh, time interval, it means the power switch is in off mode, okay? Uh, according to uh, configuration, I uh, investigated the uh, new uh, equations, so I found the uh, final uh, state of the converter in a uh, matrix. So I combined all the uh, currents of inductors and voltage of capacitor derivatives uh, in a, a general matrix. So this matrix, the sixth one, can uh, present you the final station of the, the final state of the converter that, as I said, is uh, very uh, helpful for uh, researchers that want to investigate the controller for the structure because you can find easily uh, the uh, 
transfer function of the structure for example how we can reach to this equation uh, for example if you consider this block okay uh, when the uh, power switch is on okay uh, from here you can write a simple KVL in this block so uh, we input voltage will be equal on voltage on uh, inductor and by ignoring the voltage drop on the uh, diode uh, you have a, a short circuit here so input voltage will be voltage on inductor L1 so if you come back to the uh, equation L1 DIL over DT is V so I reorganize the DIL on DT so I uh, as you can see DI also only is uh, related to V in as you can see okay the organization of all of these matrix can be done uh, by this way okay as can you say uh, seeing um, uh, the uh, off mode also uh, is here for in uh, sub figure B and uh, uh, the final uh, station of the first block uh, can be uh, found in this um, part for figure 4 as you can see uh, for uh, uh, continue of the uh, this subject I um, uh, as of that uh, as I said we have two block okay first block is the normal uh, this DC converter and second block is the uh, switch capacitor block uh, I am now are uh, focusing on the first block to uh, uh, read the uh, reaction of the structure and investigate the uh, voltage uh, gain and to obtain the voltage gain of the structure as you can see for obtaining the voltage gain uh, okay, we have to uh, consider all voltage voltage drops on all of power components. Especially, uh, the most of uh, drops will be happen on the power diodes and power uh, switches. Uh, and uh, if you uh, do a simple um, a simulation uh, or in experimental um, condition, if you consider, you will uh, find the main of the voltage drops will be on power diodes. Okay, uh, for this uh, amount of voltage that I uh, uh, considered in this study, uh, we are uh, trying to convert a, a 48 volt to 380 volt as the desired volt, a uh, DC desired volt. Uh, so, for these rated voltages. Uh, the voltage drop on diode is the thing about one volt. Okay, so uh, if you consider this value of voltage, it did uh, and consider the VD as the voltage uh, for the uh, power component. Uh, it will guarantee that other uh, losses, for example, on inductors, will be smaller than this value. And here you can find the models of the study uh, for the uh, inductor with internal uh, resistance or internal resistance of the diodes and uh, also in B uh, sub, C to, uh, sub figure C you can find the uh, uh, state of the uh, uh, structure when the power switch is in off mode so uh, there is a uh, very easy way to find the voltage output voltage uh, and <laughs> output voltage to uh, related to input voltage uh, for this uh, we have two uh, uh, inductor you can uh, find the voltage on the uh, inductors okay the voltage on inductors when the power switch is in on mode and in off mode so we can find the capacitor voltage and after that you can find the output voltage and by replacing the seven into uh, into into uh, eight you can find the final equation of the voltage it, uh, present as the gain of the uh, structure and the SC block as I said uh, uh, enhance this voltage to two times so it will be our final equation where the uh, normal boost converter conventional boost converter is 1 over 1 minus D so the uh, uh, amount of the uh, voltage gain is considerable in this uh, study also, uh, as I uh, uh, mentioned on the, in the paper, you can find all equations for the uh, fluctuation of the uh, current for the, uh, for example, for the first uh, uh, inductor, and also the value of uh, how we can find the value of the 
inductor, for example, uh, for V in, as I uh, uh, wrote in this uh, table, uh, V in is uh, 48, okay? Uh, v in is 48, V out is uh, around 400 volt. Just the frequency, switching frequencies are around 100 uh, kilohertz, and so you can find the uh, parameter value. I tried to uh, make the simulation and experimental results according to this uh, values uh, here you can find the uh, voltage donor structure uh, can be done in uh, MATLAB simulink, uh, cas uh, conventional boost, cascade boost, uh, the proposed converter with only first lock and uh, the general structure that we proposed. Uh, as you can see, for example, in 70% of uh, the cycle it reached to uh, 20 as the voltage gain but uh, the conventional boost converter can give a single about uh, 2 till 3. And the efficiency of the com uh, uh, converter, especially between uh, 100 and 20, uh, 100 watt is uh, equal with the conventional boost converter. The level of currents is not very uh, uh, different from, you, from uh, what you can uh, see. So uh, because of time, I directly go to experimental result. As you can see here, for example, um, for the 48 volt of DC voltage, we reach to 307 T uh, voltage in uh, 1 kilohertz, well, uh, 100 kilohertz of the frequency. And also the level of voltages and currents and the reaction of the power switch will receive the uh, gate source voltages that can go to on and off modes. Uh, and as a result, I can show uh, in this study we presented a uh, this DC converter with SC blocks that can be extendable to more blocks and consists of uh, several inductor, capacitor, and diodes. Um, work uh, presented the on and off state of uh, study, and also how I can say uh, also the SC block can. Uh, reduce the uh, voltage and uh, voltage stresses on the power switch that is can be one of advantage of the uh, this converter and finally I should say that this work is uh, founded by a grant uh, partially grant from the uh, scientific research uh, project unit of the Bursa Technical University in Turkey thank you for your consideration is there any problem uh, question I am ready to uh, respond the problem was that you were over time, <laughs> so please practice against the mirror or, or computer, <laughs> so you are in time. Okay. We, we have some time for short questions. Anyone, please? Okay. Go yes, on. please. Can you open that uh, last three slides? Last three slides. Yes, yes. From the Here. Yes. Yes. Here you have written in one place that is a standalone, but later on it is written that transmission, power transmission to grid blocks. Uh, which one is correct? Which one? That one place you have. In comparison to classic boost converters, the SC base power boost converters. Standalone in the sixth line. energy source basis system operating at a higher voltage level of voltage in order to. Six line one two three yes, four six five yes, six. Oh, okay. And yes, later on, you have that given this, the it is a tra power transmission to grid connected grid block. Yeah, as I said, yes, as I said, uh, this is a general uh, structure of uh, this DC converter that can uh, uh, improve and uh, can be used in anywhere that you need to uh, this DC converter. The reason that we um, entitled the for uh, residential application is uh, that uh, we are going to uh, write a new project in our university, yes, and uh, uh, it is ready to uh, give to our department. It is uh, the beginning point of the uh, this is study and uh, not another more. One more technical question is there. Have you considered the capacitor outage or capacitor failure? Yes. For uh, the switching? For yes. Uh, as I think there is a question, there is a yes. Uh, we have an equation for that. You can find 
uh, the equation, the duty cycle uh, for finding this 308 uh, or 400 volts, okay? You can find uh, the all of equation in the uh, paper. As you know, we have a very okay, limited time. You can I'm find I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you because you <laughs> haven't <laughs> left uh, any time for questions. Yes. So yes. <laughs> please follow your timeline okay. next time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we still have more interesting presentations and uh, Karol Olaf Pivovarski yes. from Poland will present us the blocking characteristics of photoconductive switches. So note, these are not usual switches but photoconductive switches and uh, usually in high voltage application it is the desirable property. And those are based on uh, semi-isolating gallium phosphate and gallium nitrate uh, topologies. So, Carol? Yes, yes. The floor is yours. Uh, and please remember... Time. The time. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. No duplicate. Uh, excuse me? No duplicate on the clone. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello, everyone. Today I would like to present uh, uh, research results of uh, my and my colleagues from Mil Military University of uh, Technology and from uh, Institute of Electronic Materials in Warsaw. Uh, it's called Blocking Characteristics of Photoconductive Switches Based on Semi-Isolating Gap and Gun Materials. Uh, outline. I will start with introduction of uh, what is photo photoconductive uh, semiconductor switch, uh, PCSS in short. I will t uh, take its principle of operation, uh, how it is, uh, how it is built. Uh, then I will talk about, uh, I will talk about uh, construction of uh, used or switches used in our research. Then I will go to uh, measurement results, and I will end with a conclusion. A PCSS is an electrical switch with its operating principle based on phenomenon of photoconductivity. Uh, it's made of semi-isolating uh, semi semi-isolating uh, conductor with uh, two ohmic uh, contacts, and the and the and the gap between ohm uh, and the space between ohmic contacts is called uh, switch gap. Uh, the switch is excited by uh, optical uh, optical impulse, which uh, which uh, by ex which excites it and uh, increase the uh, concentration of uh, charge carriers, which uh, decrease the resistivity 
of uh, semi, uh, semi, uh, semiconductor. Uh, PCSs uh, are commonly uh, based on semi isolating materials such as uh, gallium arsenide, gallium phosphoride, uh, silicon carbo uh, carbide uh, polytypes uh, 6H and 4H, and uh, gallium nitride. What are possible application of uh, these switches? Uh, they, can, uh, they, can be up, uh, they can be used uh, in po uh, power industri industry in hybrid power switch model. Uh, they can be used uh, also in uh, pulse system in the application for military in uh, high power pulse lasers, microwave sources, their head signal generators, mm. and in uh, pulse systems for civi uh, civilian use. Uh, for an automa uh, automatic control model of electronic system. Here we have an image of uh, uh, tested switches. How, how do they look? Uh, uh, the test is, uh, we tested three switches, two uh, made of uh, gallium phosphoride and one uh, made of uh, gallium nitride. The gallium phosph phosphoride switches were labeled uh, GAP uh, uh, 369 and uh, GAP 275. Uh, the uh, gallium nitride switch was labeled as uh, GAN uh, 6187. Uh, what, is, uh, what is worth uh, noting is that uh, GAP 275 switch uh, was uh, was also subject of uh, passivation, and the results will be will be shown uh, in the latest later. Uh, okay, let's let's go to the um, results measurement results. Here we have uh, measurements in blocking state. As we can see, uh, uh, switches made of uh, gallium phosphoride. For uh, all, for all measured uh, range, uh, works uh, works pretty well. And for uh, a gallium nitride uh, switch, we, we can see that uh, <coughs> after uh, voltage of uh, two uh, two comma uh, seven uh, kilovolts, we can observe uh, significant significant uh, current leakage. Where the where the f uh, when the characteristics start to be uh, nonlinear. Uh, um, uh, we can see that uh, resistivity of uh, gap and uh, gun uh, switches is different. This is expected because uh, uh, material gap material uh, gallium phosphate material used in a research had uh, greater resist resistivity than uh, gallium nitride. <coughs> Here we have uh, results uh, of our measurements in a conduction state for uh, switch uh, GAP 369. The measurements were taken uh, by illuminating uh, this uh, the switch or active region by a laser uh, uh, by uh, by les by laser uh, with uh, by three hundred uh, seventy five uh, nanometers uh, laser, and the power was uh, changed between about one and a half uh, milliwatt milliwatt to one hundred eighty uh, milliwatts. What, what, what we can see here is that mm, f for a uh, small amount of laser power between one half to three uh, milliwatts, we can, obs we, we can observe uh, ch uh, much changes in, uh, uh, car in uh, conducted current. This, uh, this can be uh, explained by, uh, by the fact that uh, for the low uh, laser power, uh, and uh, for for, la for lower laser power energy, 
uh, there is uh, there's a change in uh, laser beam uh, shape. Uh, as as we can see, uh, the uh, there's little uh, the resistivity stays the same for uh, for all or or three measured uh, voltages. <laughs> And uh, after three millivolts, it's uh, it's um, it's almost linear. Characteristics is almost linear. Uh, here we have uh, conductions uh, conductions and measurements for all three switches. Uh, we can see the uh, we can see big difference in um, in co uh, current conducted by uh, sw uh, gallium phosphide switch 369 and. Uh, gallium, uh, gallium phosphoride uh, two hundred seventy-five switch, and uh, we can see uh, and, and be between gallium nitride and gallium uh, uh, gallium nitride and gallium phosphoride two hundred seventy-five. As I said before, uh, gallium uh, phosphoride uh, uh, switch, gallium phosphide uh, two hundred seventy-five switch uh, was. Uh, uh, was uh, the passivation met was uh, conducted on her, on it, uh, which which uh, which in uh, which as we can see increased the uh, uh, the conducted current. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, mm, we can we can see that the character the characteristic are. Uh, Nonlinear, uh, and this, and uh, there's there's much uh, there's uh, there's significant change in resistivity, comparing it to uh, measured in blocking state. Uh, now the conclusion: in the blocking state, the current voltage characteristic of tested uh, semiconducting uh, gallium phosphide switches are approximately linear through the entire range of applied voltages. In case of uh, semiconducting gallium nitride switch, the no nonlinear current increases is observed when the voltage exceeds uh, to, uh, to 2.67 uh, kilovolts. Uh, kilo kilo In conduction state, this switch resistance remains high for all uh, applied voltages. It should be noted that the characteristics are nonlinear. The electric field strength ranging from uh, 5 to 10 uh, kilovolts per centimeter has very small effect on the switch active uh, region resistance. Passivation of the uh, PCSS active region surface increased the photocurrent by approximately two orders of magnitude. The blocking voltages achieved for tested switches before occurrence of undesirable sparkling significantly limit the usability, for now at least. Thank you for your attention. I hope I will, I will be able to answer your questions. You can see, questions have started oh <laughs> boy. before we get finished. <laughs> okay, please. I would like to ask uh, yes? uh, two things. Uh, yes. What is the voltage drop on the open switch? And how depends the leakage current on the temperature? Because you didn't oh, oh. the temperature. Yes, I'm, I'm s uh, yes, yes. Uh, all uh, about the temperature. All uh, measurements were taken uh, in temperature uh, of 300 kelvins. Mm -hmm. And what was the, what was the first question? Uh, voltage drop <coughs> on the open switch. It's a very important parameter. Right? And you know this confusion that open in English is not oh, the oh, one oh, that oh, you <laughs> in state mode. Uh, yeah, like uh, in conduction sentiment, yes. Forward voltage. Drop. Yeah, voltage drop when the, the, in the conductive state. state on. Oh, okay, okay. Or it's uh, open, maybe. I don't know, I'm sure. Right. Closed. <laughs> I'm in state open, not closed. On is closed because look at the dot drawing. So uh, the off is closed. This is, uh, this is just, uh, this, this is us. This is our beginning of investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we didn't uh, mes measure uh, yet the drop on the, the it's not so difficult to measure. Uh, <laughs> Take multimeter and measure. Uh, and the one more, uh, one yes. how would change the leakage current if the temperature would increase? 
We measured here. We have here. Thank you. Other questions, please. May I ask? Yes, of course. Um, I'm quite disappointed. I was expecting that oh. uh, we will get the conductor, but you are saying that orders of magnitude change in the current. But here we have nanoamps, and in conductive state we have nanoamps. So where are those orders? Uh, oh, I mean, uh, uh, oh, here, uh, here we have a uh, linear axis, mm -hmm. and here we have logarithmic. So uh, we have we have two. So we have started at ten in power of two. Yes, and we have ten and in power of four. And some switches can yes. jump up. Very to the one with passivation. But yes. 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 Uh, one microamper. Mm. Uh, yeah. Ten in power three is one micrometer. Yes. Yes. There, there are switches for very low current, not one yeah. Not but yet. Not yet. <coughs> uh, I have another question. Yes. Um, you have mm -hmm. promised at the very beginning that those can be used for laser control, even the terahertz electronics. Yes. But you haven't presented any results that confirm that. Because if you want to go to these applications, yes. essential yes. property is the reaction time. Yes, yes. And we haven't seen reaction time. Uh, so yes. did you do those measurements? Uh, yes, we are doing it uh, currently. Mm -hmm. But do you have any preliminary results that would allow you to state that? Uh, that they are pretty fast, because if you want terahertz, Anyone can help me what it should be, not picoseconds probably, no, yes? No, no, femtoseconds, terahertz. I terahertz. Femtoseconds, so which device you will use to measure femtoseconds? Oscilloscope? <laughs> because if you want to connect the oscilloscope, yes, we all are accustomed that you can have the oscilloscope probe which can come up to 100 mega ohms, but here you have giga ohms. Furthermore, for yes. such frequency, mega ohm, even mega ohm yes. oscilloscope probes do not exist. They are close to 50 ohm. This is it. Mm -hmm. And more or less they are differential. So um, I would doubt and I would <laughs> exclude such statement, well. at least for the very beginning. Okay. But what is the future? Uh, it is just the beginning because yes, probably yes. you've seen the more or less photoconductive switches when you have uh, the photovoltaic generation. Yes. And this photovoltaic is connected to the gate and this way you can control the switch as well. Mm -hmm. But those are really slow. Yes. The reason is that photovoltaic got it until it develops and the currents are small, so until you charge the gate. Mm -hmm. So what makes you think that there will be fast switches here. What is the reason behind for the statement that you will go to terahertz electronics? Uh, what makes you think what that makes this me is think? possible? Uh, I st uh, this we are not the first uh, f group who trying to st study this uh, photo, uh, photo photoconductive semiconductor switches. Uh, I, I've uh, checked a lit literature of uh, other authors. And uh, there are pointers that suggest. But where are the physical reasons? <coughs> where are the physical reasons to expect much faster response than the classical device? Mm. 
well, uh, we are uh, how to answer that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's your homework. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and we are not finished yet. Still, there is one interesting presentation to do. And um, Jaromir Konechny, Czech Republic, is presenting a hardware approach of a low power Internet of Things communication interface by an XP Flex IO module. So, Jaromir. Okay, thank you. Jaromir. Jaromir. Yes. Jaromir, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to present uh, our research uh, on the approach of uh, a low power IoT communication interface by NXP Flex IO module. Uh, so, my name is Aramir Konechny and I'm from Czech Republic, University of uh, Ostrava. So, first motivation uh, what we actually do. So, we are focusing in our research uh, in uh, low power embedded devices. So uh, low power is the main goal. So uh, this research is, uh, research is uh, focused on uh, uh, decrease of power consumption. So we have uh, basically two ways how to, how to make some uh, algorithm on, uh, for example, some communication. Uh, we have software implementation and hardware implementation. Software implementation is standard program like in C language or, or something like that and we have also possibility to uh, implement the algorithm in the hardware like FPGA or some special periphery like uh, Flex IO. So uh, if we are running uh, software uh, we are running on the CPU and uh, if we are uh, implement the hardware implementation we are running on some uh, special periphery. So we do that and uh, we compare the results and I will present, uh, uh, present to you. First, uh, we implement a communication protocol, well now protocol RFC uh, 1662. It's a binary oriented protocol and uh, the protocol divide the uh, message to frames uh, denoted with flag, it's a one special byte. Uh, to avoid uh, the misunderstood of the flag uh, in the data, we add uh, some escape sequence. Uh, so, this is the basically some uh, uh, explanation of uh, uh, of the protocol. So we have some flag, then we are transmitting data and the flag. Uh, and the uh, and the frame. Uh, we have two possibilities: multiple frame, one flag or double flag. It's it's okay. Uh, the flag cannot appear in a an, uh, in the uh, da data, so uh, we have to replace the flag by escape sequence of two uh, special bytes. So we replace it uh, to seven D. But of course. Uh, misunderstood between 7E and 7D uh, has been cleared, so we have another another byte here uh, that uh, denotes uh, the right byte. For example, uh, we have to transmit uh, this uh, this data frame, and here you can see the the special special uh, uh, bytes uh, which have to be escaped by this way and finally we add some flag and we can transmit the data so this is the basically communication protocol uh, which are uh, which we implement uh, in software way and in the hardware way we can uh, draw the uh, the communication uh, algorithm into a uh, finished state machine uh, which have uh, eight states so it's uh, basically a little bit complicated, but if you uh, if you imagine we starting here, uh, when we when we receive the flag, uh, we are in idle and we waiting for the data uh, into run mode. And when uh, we uh, receive uh, escape sequence, this is three uh, special uh, special states. And when we receive 
uh, another flag, which is uh, the final uh, final uh, byte. Then we go to stop and then to idle, and we receive the whole frame. So software implementation was uh, made in C language as interrupt protein. So uh, if uh, if the CPU or MCU uh, received the byte, uh, it appear an uh, interrupt and we uh, process the data by a software C routine. Uh, I think this is well-known way. It's not not uh, interesting. Uh, the interesting thing is uh, NXP Flex module is a special periphery uh, in an NXP uh, uh, microcontroller. Uh, basically, uh, we can emulate the protocols or a special uh, a special hardware and something like that. The module consists of three main parts, which are shifter, timers, and pins. Uh, input uh, is uploaded to shifter, and the data are shifted uh, to uh, the output pin by the clock generated by timer. And uh, we are also able to implement a finite state machine, which allows uh, eight. Uh, a different state and the control is uh, performed by central processor unit. So how the implementation looks like this. So we have a UART, we receive data and uh, we have also current state and basically on these two information we generate a new state and uh, we move data to output. So how it works, it's more detail uh, figure. So uh, we have a byte from the UART. When the module receives one byte, it calls DMA request. So it's basically uh, everything is DMA request and transferring to uh, receive register and storage the variable to UART. Uh, then uh, this, uh, the current data and the current uh, state, current state uh, uh, we, we are uh, composing the uh, comprises the, uh, the address of uh, of the lookup table, which uh, basically represents a, a new uh, new state, and the state is uh, transferred uh, to output pins. The pins are directly connected to the input pins, and uh, we have some uh, tricky thing here we have timer which is uh, uh, which is uh, um, triggered by MCU uh, pins and the t timer starts and immediately stops and uh, mm, create another uh, DMA request uh, which uh, move the information from the pin to current state this is basically uh, the function of the of the hardware uh, implementation. So some results in comparison. Uh, we choose some uh, free lengths of uh, data frames. We, ch we choose uh, fif 50 by uh, 500 bytes, 1000 and uh, 1500 bytes. Uh, number of uh, escape characters uh, within the message and a number of errors because uh, the error can appear if you have some uh, unexpected byte uh, following the uh, escape sequence. So uh, the table looks like this. So we can uh, we can see the uh, hardware. Hardware uh, it's uh, quite uh, quite uh, quite better. Uh, it's uh, the time is uh, smaller and of course the energy uh, is also smaller so we save an energy uh, basically the average is uh, about 37 uh, percent uh, the best case was uh, I just hope 72 uh, two percent and the worst case was uh, 13 percent so basically, you can say uh, that the uh, hardware uh, solution is better than software solution. Uh, in addition, uh, in hardware solution, the processor can do another 
uh, task. So this is the same uh, uh, same data, but under the representation in graph. So you can see uh, the bar graph of uh, of software implementation and hardware implementation. So in conclusion, uh, uh, we implement standard byte orientated point to point serial communication. Uh, we make it uh, as a software solution and hardware solution, and we compare. So uh, flexible approach achieves better results in terms of processing times and total energy efficiency. Also, the implementation of the finite state machine via the flex uh, I/O periphery allows the transfer of com computational power from the CPU to special hardware modules and the CPU computation power can be used to perform another task. So thank you for your attention and if you have some questions. Congratulations, probably the best time today. Thank so you. If you already have a question, please. How do you measure those times for both software and hardware? Uh, we measure uh, the times. Yeah. Uh, we just uh, set some pin before and after that and on the, on the scope. Yeah, it's on the oscilloscope. Okay. More questions? Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what uh, was the value of the clock frequency? Ooh. Uh, what you use, for example, in your hardware implementation and the software implementation? How many cycles do you need? to make the operation in your software implementation and how many cycles of the frequency you need to make in hardware? I don't remember the uh, CPU settings, but it was pretty same. So we are using same uh, same clock frequency for hardware and software implementation. And it was basically on a KL28 uh, processor. And uh, I think it was standard, but I don't know, it was uh, around the uh, tens of megahertz. Ten, tens of mega. megahertz. Thank you. Okay. More questions? We still have three minutes to go. You saved the time. Uh, may I ask my question? No. <laughs> oh, <maybe. laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> it was a try. Um, up to your explanation, you have gained both the speed and the energy. Yeah. But uh, what you have lost probably is the chip area because you have certain amount of the um, integrated circuit yes. just dedicated for that purpose. Yes, that's true. Uh, can you tell the percentage which is occupied by, by, by this machine? Uh, it is basically different li uh, like in a, uh, a programmable uh, FPGA. Yeah, because no. this is not so an FPGA, you so you, you don't even know. But you have if there is such information. Uh, no, I, I can't say we uh, occupied some percentage of the chip because the periphery is on the chip. If you're using your choice. Yeah, but otherwise it could give, have been dedicated to memory or to arithmetic logic unit. Or just cut out uh, yeah. to make your chip. Yeah, I think that the future is uh, to uh, to create uh, the complex periphery, which uh, which can be uh, configured to some uh, some purpose, and you can save the CPU. So yes, this this is the way. But there are such chips which have FPGA. On the yes, periphery. but I think then this you can chip do is whatever you want. Yeah, this chip is I think cheaper. Because FPGA is quite more complex uh, integrated circuit, so this is uh, a low low cost uh, microcontroller. Okay, so any more questions? So we are finishing one minute in advance. Congratulations! <laughs> thank you. Saved you. <laughs> our time. <laughs> so thank you all, and don't forget one thing: you've seen five presentations, and uh, there are forms to fill which one you consider is the best. So if you want, if you liked one of the presentations, go and do the vote. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations.